Okay, um, as Mr. Detweiler said, I do use it a lot. If I could keep my wall open at all times, I would. I just absolutely love having the space. And like um, he also said, I teach language arts, so the kids need to spread out. They have to get out there, and they need quiet, and they will say that. I just, I want quiet. I get distracted when there's so many kids shoved in one classroom. So you have to have that opening so that they can just go in their own little area. And I don't mean they just use the tables in the middle. I mean they go everywhere they possibly can go, even behind the drinking fountain. Okay, I've seen them, like, go down there, and, of course, I can see them through my windows, so I know what they're doing. Um, but they're all over just to get away from everybody else. And it, it has made a big difference in all the years I've been teaching. I seem to get more out of it this year. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, this is right outside. As you see, my wall is open just a little bit. Okay. And the reason I do that is because if I want to put some kids right on the other side of the wall, I can do that. But then also I can get in and out without the door slamming, the door opening, the door slamming. By the way, architects, when you do the doors, make sure you put those little, what do you call them, door stops on them yeah. because those doors are heavy and they boom, boom, boom all day long. So they have to have door stops on them. That makes a big difference. Okay. You got to take that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right. It's been one of my biggest issues this year. <laughs> luckily, yeah. luckily, a uh, great custodian did that for me, so I'm good. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> oh, he's going to, you wait, <laughs> sure. Okay, um, silent reading I already talked about. We, I have them go out and do that. Their group work is great out there. These are tables out in the ELA. Um, as you notice, we also just have those bathrooms right there. It's just a, a single bathroom. So we have one for boys and one for girls, and then we have one that, you know, boys or girls, and that seems to work really well. Um, no more of that smoking behind the, you know, bathroom like some of our teenagers used to do. They go smoking administrators the left in the building? Administration is it, amazing that what it does to have those kids in a spot and keep them there. They're not cruising down to see a girlfriend in the no, another wing um, with their bathrooms there, the restrooms there. I'm sorry, the restrooms, the drinking fountains, their lockers are all right lockers. there. There's really no reason. Once we have them in that academic area, we sort of keep mm -hmm. them there. Um, even sometimes they don't like it that much because they're not being able to cruise around. My eighth graders this year who were in last year's building really almost resent the, some less freedom, mm -hmm. which means less chaos. And, but they also admit that they see their own um, classmates more because of the setup. So. Mm -hmm. And it is nice. We have had not even close to the amount of discipline problems as we have had in the past just because they're always there. And there's windows, and the teachers are always out in the pod, you know, walking around with the kids. And it, it's just incredible. We are just always there. I mean, even going from, like, science to math and math to language arts, we can be out there and talking to them. So that builds that rapport between the teachers and the students, which is so important to have. Okay, so that's even nice to be out there just to talk to them. Hey, how you doing? And what did you do last night? Where'd you get the black eye? And, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so uh, that, this is just something that we do. I mean, anything, makeup work. Okay. I, no, I, oh, no, I'm doing the wrong thing. Okay, um, this is like they, for the guest speakers, instead of, you know, bothering, or we don't have an auditorium, so what we do is we open the walls in between because we have a seventh grade wing here and a seventh grade wing here, and then there's a wall in the middle. We can take that wall out too, just like you do the classrooms, and then we put all the seventh graders in the same um, area and as you see they're getting a presentation here from someone that came in from the community and they are able to just sit and listen and we fit the whole seventh grade um, group in there and I, I'm sure we might do that again for awards and yeah. any other presentations we even had school pictures in there which was kind of nice because we didn't have to bother anybody else it was like just in our eighth grade you know or seventh grade we had our pictures there and eighth and sixth were not bothered at all once again from an administrator standpoint if you don't have to use the gym every time for group assemblies, it's very nice for your schedule. Okay, now this has got to be one of my favorite things. This is another extra learning area. It's not in the actual wing or the extra learning pod area. This is our library, okay? And I absolutely love this because I have kids that maybe will get something right away and they don't need to sit there and go over it again. So those kids, they get time to go down the library. They can read. They can play. You know, the, she has some games down there they can play. Just gives them a little time to get away. They get to go once a week to the library. And 
Trust me, they get on me if I forget to go to the library. They just love going down there just to sit on the couches. I don't have a, oh, right here, the couches over there, just so that they can sit and read. It's much more comfortable than sitting in that hard chair at the desk. Okay, and yes, we have those little carpet things too for the pods so that they can just sit on those. It really does make a difference just having that open area. Um, intervention, we have a lot of kids that need extra intervention. And as you see, the walls are closed, but the kids can still come out and then they're not bothering anybody. They're not being bothered by the kids in the classroom since the walls are closed. That works out really well. And I know I see in the whole seventh grade, the other seventh grade teacher and I, the other language arts, we constantly use that area. So it's pretty much always full. Our interior design person suggested wheels on those tables, and that was a great idea mm -hmm. because you go in any, any one wing and they're in different formations. They're moved up against the wall. There's two, four. They steal them from another wing sometimes, so you can create about any configuration you want. Right, and we had computer desks that were in our classrooms because at one time we had talked about each, all of us having computers in our room, so they had tables. And now we just took those tables out into the extra learning area and put them out there so we have more tables, which is really nice. We are using whatever we possibly can get. And like I said, some kids just sit on the floor. They just want to be away from everybody else. And luckily, no, we haven't had any discipline. I'm impressed. Oh, I did it again. Okay, um, we have two teacher meetings. This is the conference room on the left-hand side here. Um, that's the one by the office. So when we have big parent meetings or IEP meetings, that's great right there. We have, actually, there's two of those in the office. And then this one right here is the one that the team teachers meet every day. And as you see, it has a computer and a phone. It has a file cabinet in here um, that we can lock up the, um, lock it up so nobody can go in there. So even if we need an extra computer for some students, we can lock that up and kids can go use that computer or they can meet at that table. But that is something that we use every day. Our team of teachers get together and we discuss the kids and what we need to do and how we can help them and the rewards they get and all that. That is our time to um, consolidate with each other. And that is really nice to have. And you have two of them. So both seventh grades can um, do it at the same time. And, and we are all on different schedules. So we all get to use that. And it's nice that phone system is awesome, by the way. That is incredible. Instead of having to run all the way down, we can just, hey, can you send me this? Can you do this? Can you? It's so much nicer now. Okay, team activities. We open the pods and use it. We're doing Olympics right now for seventh grade, and our whole seventh grade is doing it. They go to a different classroom every day, and they do a different activity, and they have like first, second, third, and then we're going to have a big pizza party at the end for the whole seventh grade that student council is taking care of. Did you know that, Mr. Detweiler? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, now he knows that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, and... um. So I know, I know they have like other, uh, other things that we can do out there too. Um, this is a nice, um, you can see the three windows that are in each classroom facing the extended learning area, which allows the teachers to um, see them. But it's also, they are integral blinds that can be closed. If they really needed some privacy, you can do that as well. But it does really create, even when they're closed, you can still see what's going on out there. Now this, Mr. Detweiler, the special education classroom? Yes. That you have those in each If you look at your floor, floor mat there, Rooms 605, 705, and 805 are the centralized special education rooms. We put those in the middle with a door on both sides, if you see where the doorways are, so that that space can open up to either team. Uh, in the middle school, that, those four classrooms on one side represent really a small school. Those four teachers have a, a great deal of autonomy. But a resource teacher can be in the center and service students from both and go out in the extended learning area and vice versa. Creates a pretty nice um, facility for our special ed students. Okay, um, when we had parent conferences, um, the students were the ones that led them. They would make a nice little binder with all of the things that they had done, and they wrote about them saying, you know, this is what I learned from it. And then they present their binders to the parents. And then the teachers will go around and meet with each of the parents. So this worked out well. We opened both classrooms, and then we could put, you know, like a family in one classroom, another family in the other classroom, put one out here so that they were spread out, but they were easy enough for us to get around and talk to them too. On your floor plan, there's little number two. This, this is where this picture was taken from. You find little number two facing north. That's the vantage point for that picture. Okay, so we already talked about the lockers being in there um, and that we're able to see them at all times, which really does help. And then the bathrooms I, I talked about. Some of the disadvantages, I'm getting this from eighth grade students that I went and interviewed. Um, the lighting is nice because it does make you feel a little bit like you're outside, but the problem is there are some classrooms that you cannot see the projector, 
or see the smart board, and we have smart boards throughout the building, and we use them all the time. We use our document cameras. We use smart. It's unbelievable the technology in this building now that I just I had no idea about. Um, <laughs> we can pretty much use anything. We have above our computers. We have the DVD players, and they have the sound system up there, and all we have to, and the microphones, and all we have to do is flick a switch, and it can go from and push, you know, input up on the projector. And it goes from movie to DVD. I even have my VCR plugged in there because I still have some videotapes. So I have all three of them in there, and I just flip a switch, and I can have whatever I want. I can turn on the TV. I can just do music from the computer. I can put the computer, whatever I'm doing online, you know, if I'm using um, teacher tube, I can put that up there, and the kids can watch it. I never was able to do that before in the last school because my, ne my computer never hooked into all of that. And I always struggled with that. I always had to try to figure out and pull cords all the way over to try to figure out without the kids tripping over them and breaking their necks in my classroom. So this actually is really nice to have, that whole technology thing. Okay, so, but it is very tough to see uh, in some of the classrooms. When that sun comes through, they just cannot see it. And you can't seem to get it dark enough. Yeah, we would like to watch a movie inside our pods for the whole seventh grade. We can't really do that because it is too lit up back there or out there. So that is one issue. Um, and then another one, they said they don't get to see their friends. That seems to be a problem because they are isolated in that seventh grade pod. They don't go anywhere except for to their challenger classes, and then they come right back. So they that don't get it, to see anybody. Sorry. Makes it tough if you're a seventh grade girl with an eighth grade boyfriend. Yes. Really makes that really tough. Really does. And that's why they're always hanging out in the mid hall there before school, and we're always running in there. You come this way, you go that way. But it works. It works. Okay, that's why we're always out there. It's what? Seventh grade dad, yeah. Seventh, yeah. <laughs> seventh grade dads love it. Yeah, That's right. oh yeah, I'm sure. And then um, the bathroom, that's always a problem. Now that you're only down, or down to one, it's like everybody wants to go at the same time and you only get those three minutes in between classes, so it's like, oh shoot, you know, we can't, it's going to take too long. So we have to be a little lenient about letting them go during class if they're not right in the middle of something. But otherwise, it hasn't been too much of a problem. One last comment for me, and I just want to, thank my board as I do every time, my board of education, they um, were willing to take risk. I'll never forget the board meeting where we decided to, to do this. And um, the architects were really doing a great job of showing we can do this. And it was close to a little bit over budget. We thought it would come in under bid. Um, the board was a little hesitant. They were getting some pressure from the community that's too fancy or too much. We shouldn't be this much of a building and, or the innovation and all that. And I, I just um, will never forget that moment when they decided, yeah, we can do this. And we came in under budget, and we have a beautiful new building with amazing facilities and um, uh, attributes and qualities that I'm very proud of. Yeah, and so, we use every single part of it, yeah. too. There's nothing that's been left undone. It's, I am very impressed with it. And any administrators left, if you're going into this process, um, don't let teachers tell you what they want. Um, <laughs> truly. Excuse this, me? <laughs> well, I mean, as far as the design of the building. The, and I think... Um, <laughs> He's not helping himself at all um, here. <laughs> I, think, I, think Chris, it's that, I think Chris said it best when he said, we don't know what learning is going to be. And I, I can't let a teacher who's done the same thing for 25 years not allow us to create a space that someone 40 years from now is going to use differently than we can even think about. So when we decided to do these things that were very different, we tried to make sure that we're not planning for us. It's not just about us about 100 years of education in our community.